good evening uh, thank you for uh, joining us on a nice sunny tuesday evening here in mumbai i don't know how the weather in uh, delhi and bangalore is uh, let me welcome my panelists before i introduce the topic we have with us today uh, uh, uma talreja uma as many of you know is the customer care associate chief marketing and customer officer for shopper stop welcome uma thanks for joining us thank Prachi you prachi mohapatra whom many of you know is uh, the industry face of uh, fbb fashion big bazaar cmo of fbb thank you prachi uh, thank Good you for being part of the uh, conversation today khatija lokhandwala deputy general manager marketing zivame khatija as i've just come to know is based in bangalore so hello from uh, mumbai khatija and thank you for Good joining on. this panel uh, dr ipsita chatterji head innovation development and brand strategy lotal herbals a very interesting brand that has really done wonders over the last few years thank you ipsita for joining us again thank uh, you for inviting uh, me really. and Hi. last but not the least uh, the gentleman of the panel ayushman chira chirane wala head of product and marketing fast track titan company limited thank you ayushman for being part of the panel as many of you know who have joined us already what we are here to discuss today is the impact covid uh, has uh, had and is going to have uh, as we move along on the fashion and lifestyle industry and uh, just before we uh, got into this conversation uh, we were discussing how the fashion and lifestyle industry is a very large umbrella of uh, many segments uh, uh, within within it and what we'll try to do is we'll try to slice these segments and look at the top 3 4 segments and the impact covid is happening having on these segments and how uh, what is the outlook for these industries uh, more so from a consumer standpoint then from a, a point of view of the impact on the businesses themselves and last but not the least uh, the impact this will have on the marketing business and hence spends on media the few grounds uh, uh, four five bucket items that uh, i'd like to cover during this conversation is uh, the impact of economy and consumer sentiment and as we all know that has been decimated over the last few months economy is kind of uh, right now still into a downward curve Uh, there are a lot of projections on when things will pick up but the jury is still out on that let's see how it uh, pans out uh, more imp- very importantly the fashion and lifestyle industry is very uh, deeply integrated into what happens in the retail space and as we all know retail in many many cities is yet to open up retail in india was shut for a good part of 3 months it is gradually opening but large parts of the country still don't have physical retail open and it has very severe impact on the uh, fashion and lifestyle industry so what is the impact of retail how the future of retail will change post covid how does and what this has done lack of physical retail it has given the acceleration of e-commerce more impetus in the last few months and e-commerce as we all know is a multifaceted uh, you know platform where it's not just uh, you know how you manage your distribution it is also about how you build your brands how you competing with smaller brands so how does the strengthening of e-commerce uh play out over the next few years as you know uh, businesses start picking up again it makes e-commerce companies stronger what is the impact it has on brand building then we'd also like to look at uh, you know long term term long term impact of covid the trends that were already happening pre covid and how they get accelerated uh, also very importantly in this entire conversation is uh, the china factor as we all know many industries including the fashion lifestyle industry depends hugely on imports from china and now with the uh, india uh, having border tensions with china imports not going to be that easy what is the impact this will have last but not the least uh, we'll also touch upon specifically uh, the beauty industry why i say that is there have been very interesting case studies in the past where which have showcased that parts of the beauty industry have actually grown significantly post you know slow downs and flow post uh, natural disasters so is that going to be the case here also and how will this face of beauty industry change so with that uh, uh, ground let me start the conversation let me first jump to uma talreja from shopper stop uma uh, malls and retail uh, outlets were shut for many months uh, how are things uh, picking up now are uh, are things coming back to normalcy across uh, the various stores you have thanks navel so i think uh... of course the beginning of lockdown everything was shut right and uh, here is where we saw that all of us had to jump on the digital bandwagon fairly quickly and i'm sure most brands would have done that just like shopstop did as well so that was the beginning of lockdown much more focus on online much much more focus on whatsapp selling etc etc 
but now stores are open it's been uh, a few weeks since all stores are open across the country i think you see some different patterns which are now emerging so we've also been uh, in the apparel segment all brands are also on end of season sale uh, since august and uh, that is giving definitely a little bit of boost to the otherwise demand that would have been there and you do see people coming back yeah. to stores i think they differ during between regions so where the covid penetration is probably lower and the impact is lower like small towns are uh, definitely the north and delhi uh, tier 2 tier 3 markets i think these are where we are seeing customers are actually coming back and uh, we are back to maybe a uh, degrowth of about uh, 40 35 to 40% in these markets of what it was last year it's in the other markets like uh, west for sure bombay pune uh, some part of south which is still slow yes. uh, maybe we are at about 50% uh, of what we used to be 40 to 50% depending on the store month august or this is cumulative from april august i'm talking about august september now uh, i think before that we were uh, it was zero and maybe went up to 25 to 30% at some point in time So I think that's really where it is. Uh, we also see some differences in the time type of people who are coming to the store. Our average age of visitors in the store has definitely fallen. Uh, that's one uh, pattern that we see. That suddenly more of our younger customers are coming in. We also see new customers coming in. So while in the past we have seen a very heavy penetration of our loyalty base, which still does exist, we do still have a very high penetration of our loyalty base. but now we are seeing newer customers walk in and they mostly from the 2 km catchment where we seeing new customers are coming into the stores as well i think everybody is creating a preference within the neighborhood instead of going far and that's something that everybody can leverage to their advantage depending on where they are based uh, you know and where the stores are are based uh, i think therefore it does seem to be picking up but it's a situation which is very delicate one doesn't really know how the cases will explode and therefore uh, what you will need to do next i think one will have to as marketing stay agile you have to keep your ears to the ground and then react digital has become extremely important because that is not as affected though the demand is uh, definitely overall consumption is affected but digital i think seems to have certain grounds and there there is a possibility to attract youth there is a huge potential to actually do essentials etc also but when unlock has taken place we have seen people move out of essentials into discretionary categories as well so i think it is there is a there is some changes which are definitely there one can say how these will progress but it does look like we are moving to a slightly better festive than we imagine right and uh, if the covid is under control and if you know we see that trend of cases being kind of controlled then we are we are on a reasonably better track than what one had thought well that's that's good to hear prachi what's your sense you also are part of a you know large brand that is that that is very dependent upon retail sales It, does your experience say uh, something similar yeah i mean uh, uma actually summarized it uh, very uh, aptly for most of us out there Uh, see the difference that we come across as a brand, uh, since we also exist within a hypermarket, is primarily there is a lot of push uh, which happens from um, from our existing base, which comes for shopping for essentials as well. And also uh, look at the price point we operate in. We're a mass brand, uh, so uh, for us it becomes far more easier to get footfalls inside the stores. Um, from a price point of competitiveness, that's a that's a plus plus for us. We enjoy. um a few things that we have seen as uh, apart from the macro economics changing the entire uh, footfall structure inside the brand few things that we have seen inside the store is also a lot of change in product mix and uh, i'll come to the beauty industry later come let me let me address the fashion part of the business first um a lot of it came back to essentials or a lot of it came back to what you are Uh, wearing to represent a, a, a space like this so most of us are on our phones or on on our laptop throughout the day so we what we what we have seen is there is a lot of propensity to buy a foot pee lot of propensity to buy a t-shirt uh, high surge on uh, uh, sleepwear as well as shorts these are products which will which will see and i'm sure uh, uh, all of us are experiencing this uh primarily because of what the is being utilized at home um the 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 idea was uh, never to have a focus on you know 
uh, a certain category. So, for example, a kids category. Kids have grown during this past uh, three months. The first time when we actually right. saw fashion uh, opening up, kids actually grew up in sizes. So that was that became an essential. That became a pent up requirement for uh, any parent to actually meet at that point of time. And that's that was what. was first addressed i'm sure um, khatija has her own story to tell about uh, lingerie and innerwear that's something that we also experienced um, these are these are categories which suddenly saw a boom um so yeah few is a few surprises um and of course as lockdown is is actually opening up in certain parts of the uh, country that's how you see the pattern increase or decrease for example kolkata went into a lockdown yesterday so suddenly you see a uh, see a, 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 a blip in uh, in the in the sales of certain part of the country because of sudden lockdown going into it so the yeah these are these are surprises these are experiences that most of us as fashion brands are experiencing yes i mean that that's absolutely relevant and a lot of business leaders have expressed apprehension about you know regional lo- lockdowns having a negative impact on opening up but i guess the way a situation is we'll have to keep living with it for some more time atija what's your uh, what's your uh, experience of uh, unlock and the category that you guys operate in how are uh, how is the unlock kind of happening from a consumer uh, purchase standpoint so one thing that's been very interesting for us novel is that you know zivami is an omni channel player which is significant in the e-commerce space and we also have you know retail stores and uh, you know just before the lockdown happened the thought would have been ki maybe lingerie sales would go down now why would one need to actually purchase lingerie but you know we've all been surprised at the kind of demand that we've seen on lingerie right people are not only shopping for basic styles which surely go high on comfort but we've seen demand for strapless bras for push up bras you know for shapewear that actually you know you would think that you would you would only buy it because you know you're stepping out but consumers have actually you know indulged and shopped in these categories. categories and you know to, to feel good to look good and to dress up for themselves two other categories that we have seen a big jump in one was sleepwear i think earlier there was a trend where consumers would end up wearing their old outerwear clothes as sleep and sleepwear has seen a complete transformation on account of this lockdown you know it's been seen as a very serious category as a category which requires a lot of thought it offers comfort and style both and consumers are you know actively shopping for sleep pair and looking for prints and colors that kind of add the you know excitement to their lives activewear is the other big category you know that really uh, saw a surge health wellness has become a priority for most of us on account of you know the situation uh, you know taking a conscious call of actually working out and making exercise a part of our daily routines i think a lot of consumers have taken it up quite seriously and are looking for gear the right kind of gear to be worn you know while they're working out so all the categories that we were actually present in so a really good surge and you know we don't really not seen a, you know kind of a drop in demand after the lockdown actually got over demand came back quite robustly and you know we see it sustained month after month even in, in the retail front while of course footfalls were you know footfalls were low in the last 15 to 20 days we've seen you know about 70% of the consumer footfalls coming back to the stores fantastic that's good to hear because i think that's a very positive thing and this is what is happening in early september once we are well into the festive season around october november i'm sure things will be even better ipshita let me come to you uh you belong to a very interesting category within the larger umbrella of fashion and lifestyle and as i was yes. mentioning at the start uh beauty products have seen a kind of uh, very different trajectory of growth as compared to the uh, rest of the parts of fashion what has been sure. the is the experience of lotus herbal similar to what's happened in the past uh, uh, downturns that you know people buy splurge more on beauty products right right so let me explain in detail first of all initially like any other industry our industry was also under hiccups in fact according to statistics beauty is uh, in actually the top 10 industries which have been negatively impacted because in beauty there are you know daily needs and then there are luxury needs as well so of course certain product categories did see a st- setback however you know beauty has become more holistic more approachable and like i i would like to uh, carry it forward from katija where she said that you know wellness is a very important part of our lifestyle these days whether working out and similarly in beauty holistic wellness holistic beauty has come uh, forward is a very very strong point 
also um, as i said you know earlier that was the lipstick effect where you know people during economic turndowns or calamities used to indulge in little luxuries which used to make them happy which was lipsticks and in the past if you go back to the early 1900s which is 1929 to 1933 the great depression time 2008 recession natural calamities people do indulge in lipstick effect the shopping of lipsticks however now the contrary purview is that during the lockdown and even post the lockdown and the unlock period you are muzzled in masks all the time so how would a lipstick stay relevant till now so another interesting right. phenomena which has come forward is actually the eyeliner effect and you know uh, as human beings non verbal communication whether between two individuals or between communities whether we are doing a zoom call or we are meeting people face to face normal non verbal communication forms a very important part of a human life so you know with the mask here only the eye part is exposed and that's why you see a surge of products related to the eyes and beauty so as i said beauty industry has a lot of options and opportunities in products also another product opportunity that is opened up for the beauty industry is safe beauty and safe essentials soap is the new hero shower washes are the new hero disinfection is the new hero so safe beauty essentials all have become a very important part so that's why you know uh, albert einstein had once said the measure of intelligence is actually the ability to change i would say that you know a beauty industry is a very intelligent industry because the product opportunities are innumerable and also beauty is so well knit in our communities that it's impossible to you know turn down on products and at lotus we have one product for every economic group we are a group of uh, beauty brands we are a, we have so many beauty brands with us and of course our latest acquisition in the holistic wellness segment which has changed the face of beauty forever ayurveda ayurvedic beauty has become very very important and that's why our latest acquisition which is soul tree which is a very premium ayurvedic brand and talks about mindful beauty conscious consumption of beauty that's that's how beauty with a purpose so you're bang on uh, this is an industry that has sold skin tone products to men maybe now it's time to encourage men to start using eyeliner sales will grow up significantly <laughs> they do in korea they do in they, korea they do they do they do, they do many, in korea. many countries let they me do. come to you ayushman ayushman uh, uh, you uh, you are you are in a category which uh, in many ways is not really an essential product right and uh, the three uh, months of lockdown would have hit the category really hard how are you seeing the unlock uh, impacting your business or sales also picking up as much as you know some of the other brands uh, are done or you're still waiting for green shoots to be visible uh so you're absolutely right i think they're clearly in the non essential space uh watch has been a uh, core for fast track followed by the other accessories that went into the entire summer season i mean sun sunglasses is another very big uh, category for us and fast track is one of the largest brands but the entire summer people were at home right and there were really no uh avenues to go out and buy so of course there was clear impacts in uh in terms of the lockdown uh having said that i think what the lockdown also allowed us to do is uh we could actually uh, spend the time to understand what impact is it having on our customers and what are the kind of uh categories or what are the kind of uh, sub segments that are likely to emerge uh for us to capitalize on and uh, so a few of the uh, nuances i'd like to bring uh, to people's attention and i think khatija also spoke about it is that so we clearly found that sports and uh, healthy living is becoming a very important thing right fitness so a lot of people were really into fitness and fitness bands so one of the first upsurges right when the unlockdown happened the other good part that actually uh, fast track has uh, and that works for us is we have a multi we have a multi channel approach so uh, we actually sell across multiple channels we have our own stores we have online we are the largest on most of the market marketplaces and uh, we already had our omni play but of course like you mentioned in the beginning we clearly made it uh, much more heightened and now we are almost 80% of our stores are omni enabled uh, and uh, we have a mbo channel we have the large format store channels so the shoppers and the lifestyles of, of the world of course so each of those channels were impacted differently right and uh, uh some of them are still recovering for us and some of them have recovered to pre covid levels and actually growing for us right so without getting into the specifics of which channels i'm sure all of us are aware that online would have kicked up and really worked wonders so the great part is uh, that we saw most of these consumer behaviors which we were seeing any which ways uh just uh, really heightened and speed up for us right so the unlock 
actually when the unlockdown happened, we really saw many of these speed up. And during the lockdown, we could prepare well for it, is what, is what I would say. Right. That's good to hear. Uh, let me uh, now come to, uh, you know, an important uh, aspect of the discussion. What we've seen during the lockdown, as all of you have mentioned in some uh, way or the other, uh, digital commerce, e-commerce has become a even more important part of, uh, you know, pickup of growth. Uh, what has happened also is that that's one uh, channel of distribution through which sales have gone up significantly. What I'd like to know from you, since most of you uh, come from a marketing background, is that how does that impact your brand over a longer run? And the reason I ask is for, you know, uh, is, 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 is because price discovery, e-commerce is very convenient. Like Prachi said, it is, you know, searches have gone up significantly. Brand affinity pulls the consumer into an e-commerce platform or to your you know, own website, onto the digital media. But when it comes to buying online, you have to compete more, far more fiercely uh, with another brand which is offering a lower price point, which has you know, very slight innovation either in product or in messaging. So in many ways, you know, unlike a retail store where if a consumer has come in to buy a certain brand, uh, chance, very high chances are that he'll go back with the same brand. Whereas on e-commerce, once the consumer is into the store, uh, the chances of him buying your brand go down because you know, there's so much more on offer. So as marketers, you know, how does this impact your business? Say, you know, looking out 24 months, what are the things you will be doing differently from what you've done over the last two years? Maybe, you know, since we are with you, Ayushman, we can start with you. Sure. Yeah. So now, actually, you know, for us, um, e-com has always been a very important channel. So we are really targeted at the youth, right? So 18 to 21 being our core audience, e-com was seeing a significant double digit growth even pre-lockdown. Uh, so like I said, now it's become a lot more heightened, a lot more people buy on or online. So some of the mantras that we have used to actually be successful uh, pre as well as currently uh, have really been uh, stuff like, uh, you know, getting your content right, uh, knowing who is the audience that you're trying to ap appeal to. And the facts which you mentioned about the fact, I mean, what e-com does for you is it really flattens the world, right? So if somebody is uh, entering the category, he is actually seeing everything that possibly is for to offer. And you really need to fight for a differentiation, all the premium that you're going to charge for, right? Uh, with those facts, I think, of course, having strong brands work for you, having sharply positioned brands work for you, but uh, there are still mix of customers. Some customers are possibly more price sensitive. Some customers are possibly looking for newer, uh, uh, you know, newer offerings, uh, improvement in technology and so on and so forth. So it's really for you to decide that which of those customer buckets you're going to go after and how are you going to convert there? Uh, I see that. I mean, uh, so what, what e-com did for us, actually, say, if I talk, uh, talk about watches category, it really brought a lot of unbranded players uh, onto the branded field of marketplaces where uh, similar looking watches are available for one tenth, maybe one fifth of the price. Um, but we actually noticed something very unique. Uh, we were actually uh, wondering that maybe there is no reason for people to come and buy you or uh, buy the brands and pay so much a premium. But we really realized that that customer who's buying those brands are, are really the value conscious customer who was never really your base to begin with, you know? So it is, it is really the un, unbranded guys who are still going, going there and buying. Possibly they are buying it for the convenience that the e-commerce platform pro provides them and they're going for those un, unbranded players. But our play remains within the branded uh, seg segment, right? So you are still competing with your branded competition, which you would possibly find in other channels like a shoppers or so on and so forth. And uh, they're really the differentiations that you talk about, which was already the part of the core offering is how you stand out and you convert uh, is what I would say. Yeah, I think the original core principles of brand building stay true. Uh, naturally, you have to compete more fiercer. So you have to, you know, adopt to uh, new channels of communication, especially do more content, uh, also positioning. Prachi, what's your experience of, uh, you know, uh, doing a lot of e-commerce selling uh, as opposed to retail sales? Uh? 
um, here's the thing for us uh, whatever stage of digital maturity we were in we just had to notch up ourselves and go um, uh, go definitely deeper into this uh, space as uma was right mentioning there was no other choice uh, yes. for any any of us retail or brick and mortar brands um here's two things that we observe see when you have a have a customer inside the store you have a captive know that he or she is definitely going to uh, invest in something inside this square footage area that he has stepped into uh, while ecom is a very different ball game altogether you have deals going on you have brands which are there you have uh, look alikes uh, which we as brands also follow and we get followed as brands also so definitely there are uh, a, a, there is that's a, that's a space wherein you have um, two two and a half Uh, seconds of uh, uh, of attention span of a customer so uh, two things that we have done uh, very very specifically as a brand is we definitely uh, are, have uh, have sliced down the cohorts that we speak to that's going to be uh, as ayushman mentioned that's going to be one of the space even if you're a value brand or a luxury brand or a prestige brand you should know uh, what is it that you are running for what is the cohort that you are uh, what is the interest uh, sets that you are running for that's very clearly defined for us and um, it's not only about me as a brand fbp we have all as a brand we have brand factory as a brand all these formats have their specific target segments that we speak to hence for us we have seen a conversion rates being very very uh, strong um our our cacs have been strong uh, for this um uh, definitely the searches that you uh, that that def has gone up you you're looking forward to acquiring newer customers customers who have not or have flirted with your brand or have flirted with look alike at some point of time and you're going to be sharper about acquiring these customers so that definitely has helped us uh, for 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 us to build our e-com business um here's the thing for us uh, all of us knew that omni channel was the way uh, for us we just got pushed into this entire space faster than anybody anticipated it actually the, the actually the ball started rolling faster than ever before in the situation that we actually uh, found ourselves in so yeah uh, it has been a fairly balanced mix of what we have been observing and uh, our online sales definitely have moved upwards on um, on a stronger growth than than the pre covid uh, uh, time um, offline sale is definitely yet to catch up uh, at a faster speed right. uma uh, do you think discounting will uh, play a even bigger role in uh, uh, lives of brands like yours and what is the impact you see that uh, having on you know brand values things that we've spoken about that really first pulls the co- consumer in i think uh... firstly we don't have a variable discounting policy between offline and online so what you experience in the store is what you will see online uh the second thing is i think uh, during lockdown what we have done is we've been quick on the ball to launch a lot of online friendly brands we've launched close to 150 new brands uh, on our online channel uh, in the last 2 to 3 months and that has helped us to actually widen the catalog online beyond obviously a very wide catalog which a department store like ours would actually have to offer uh from a discounting perspective we we don't see that as a key strategy because we're still sitting at the premium end of the market yeah and uh, you know like ayushman mentioned uh, that we do have a branded play and we have seen watches grow premium watches grow we have seen fragrances as a category go we have seen uh, premium beauty as a category go we have seen skin care grow right men's grooming has grown and there is a definite move not just towards let's say yes there are people buying essentials and people buying what they need but there's a definite move towards premiumization which is also visible because there is you know it's not just about the lipstick effect moving to the eyeliner effect is really about what makes you feel good and what are you going to invest in at this point in time with the money that you have available so i think that is one definite uh, area the second is if we go back and look at the audiences we already have a very large audience because we are talking of stores between our stores department stores plus the entire group of sl lauder network which belongs to us on the ground as well as other stores like home stores that we have and we have crossword stores we already have a core audience base which is very very large already knows the brands we've been in business for 25 to 30 years right so there is already a need for those to actually serve what they want from a favorite and a trusted brand like ours where the merchandise is authentic 
and it is guaranteed to be authentic in these categories where we know that branded has a lot of spurious uh you know penetration in the market as well and that plays to our advantage where we have the audience as well as the trust uh, as credentials i think that's the important thing as far as discounting goes i don't think i would call it discounting but yes one needs to be exciting one needs to be compelling and one needs to have the right kind of promotions and therefore having that calendar of you know events themes what are those uh, main campaigns that you really want to run which actually excite people uh, is very important our our instagram has been active like never before we are doing live events continuously right we know we see that actually driving traffic to our uh, site and actually helping us to grow the category as well um we can't really say that you, you know you want to compete with the uh, markdowns on you know a uh, uh, more horizontal player let's say but i don't think the horizontal player is also discounting the same product there is a difference between what you're liquidating and old season i think over a period of time that gap will also narrow because you will find that the brands also will not be able to necessarily uh, afford the kind of margins to have that kind of variable dis- uh, deep discounting in the market right that's the first thing i don't think brands will be able to afford to do that and neither will the horizontals do it any more because there is a natural wave and a organic growth towards digital firstly so there is no need to be value accretive any more for acquisition right it's only about actually fair market play and where do you really want to actually strategize and where do you want to position um, yourselves which audience in which categories and what type of brands and i think all every brand has its own place uh, you know for that in uh, in india what's your experience katija uh, does discounting play any role at especially i'm talking covid times of course you know in uh, normal times uh, you do seasonal discounting in some cases other cases you don't do but covid times is that a good strategy to follow and what is the impact it has you know what is the impact it leaves on the brand firstly um, i'll tell you consumers have actually become very very brand loyal in the last few months right? right they want to stick to brands that they trust because there are concerns you know on safety hygiene and they want to you know buy into brands that are familiar comfort yeah exactly exactly so comfort. this is actually a time for brands to build loyalty rather than go the discounting route i think brands that you know very clearly communicate the kind of value that they add to consumers lives both functionally and emotionally are the ones that resonate the most honestly i believe consumers are willing to pay up you know price for the products if they know that there's real value which is being added and i do not think that discounting you know maybe you know is something that would convince consumers to come into your brand even in the covid times that's right yeah i think i think that's a very relevant point consumers are looking for you know the comfort of you know having interacted with a brand of knowledge to, and trusting the brand you know to travel familiarity yeah. if i can use that word ipshita uh, lotus herbals has been uh, around for a while uh, you operate in many categories uh, discounting i'm guessing is not really uh, a strategy you follow but not the category is intensely competitive it is intensely fierce and brands right. across uh, the entire category are doing severe discounting so how does that impact uh, you know beauty as a business beauty as a business in totality of course with new brands coming up every now and then has impacted the business of other brands which have recently come up but for a brand like lotus we have a legacy of 30 years we have a portfolio of brands which covers from every aspect you can imagine so our brand umbrella our distribution is so much that people recognize us with experience with safety with assurance like fatija was telling i would like to take a cue from that you know brand emotion experience is something which which can never be accounted for so that's why discounting by any other brand in the same space like you said it's become a very competitive space lots of brands are coming every now and then they are doing fabulous work but i've always maintained that you need to stay true your commitment to your brand you need to tell your own story and that's why discounted doesn't really impact us at all what impacts us is our innovation and that's what lotus is always known uh, for we are resilient we are very very adaptable so no matter what the situation is today it's covid maybe something tomorrow or maybe better tomorrow as well we are always prepared because of our innovation so that's that's how we uh, stand an edge we stand above the rest and that's why discounted doesn't yes. really matter for us i would say that let me now come to a you know slot slightly expanded and larger timeline we've discussed the impact of covid and how things are opening up and perhaps how things will be over this festive season and a little beyond 
economy is still you know kind of growing in stutters so to say uh, the impact of government sort of push impact of consumer starting to spending will take time to play out two years out or let me rephrase the question how long do you think uh, for the industry to get back to normalcy and when i say normalcy it's a very you know very very wide term when i uh, mean to say normalcy uh, there's an extra revenue that was done in the last financial year to 2019 2020 and things have fallen off the cliff this year of course will be the on a annualized basis a year of degrowth are we looking at things getting back to the same base of index 12 months from now 24 months from now 36 months from now how far is that go ahead ipshita yeah so uh, basically if you say that you know i would say uh, definitely a uh, time period of about 12 to 24 months it's what we anticipate to get back to what we were in the last year but of course in your category yeah in our category, about your category. Yeah, yeah yeah in our category however the things have become uphill for us ever since the lockdown has happened and also at the same time post lockdown also things have becoming better the major challenge as i told you during the lockdown period and that's why the growth stopped at that point of time was because of logistics nothing else so logistics and containment zones and uh, the kind of delivery partners you were working with with the travel restrictions all that came into play otherwise we as a brand also our supply chain by the way is completely in india so from concept to commercialization everything is home grown so nothing was problematic for us apart from logistics and delivery partners apart from that that's where the major setback was and now things opening up unlock is happening so i don't see it in a very dismal situation from now it's growing uh, day by day uma what's your sense if you are looking out two years how long will it take for you to you know on an annualized basis get back to the same level i think um, retail if you have to separate out it's one doesn't know because it all depends on the vaccine and right. one doesn't know what's going to really happen but uh, things are picking up uh, slowly but surely yes i think a lot of us will have to adopt strategies where we compensate for that loss in growth through digital That's and right. i think digital will play out in multiple ways so it is going to be about digital retailing it's not just about the website it's not just about the app but it's of other things as well so we've seen adoption of whatsapp in a very big way we allow people now and uh, you know we facilitate payments through whatsapp our personal shoppers are on whatsapp uh, driving sales and that's a channel which is delivering well for us and is only going to grow we now have other uh, areas of our business which are actually adopting digital channels like that we for example have a lounge service which you can book an appointment with a personal shopper and shop we also have appointment shopping within the store we have queueless shopping within the store we have contactless shopping I think it's going to be about digital retail, and that adoption will take some time. And if I have to give a, a, a analogy, it's like let's say in travel, I think there will be some people and segments which will be first of the block. So business travelers will be first of the block. People who have the money who can actually spend on that extra half seat will be first of the block. Similarly, there will be people you know who who's like they stood in the Apple queue because they wanted to get there first. There will be people who will be first of the block for retail as well. and it is about capturing that share in the market being relevant to them at that point in time and making it safe making it comfortable and making it exciting in a new way i think that's going to be very important uh, one can't say if this is one year or two years it has been very fluid uh, already and uh, right now it looks like yes things are slowly emerging to be coming out of the docks i would say it's not that it's coming back to normal but yes it's at least coming out of where it was but um, one can't really predict in my view whether it's going to take a year or two years it really depends on how uh, the virus uh, shapes yeah. let me ask you an add on question under the umbrella of uh, categories that you operate in, which are the few categories it's good to know that you know sales are coming back 50 60% on in store sales are back and obviously you're absolutely right digital will have to increasingly now compensate for loss in retail sales but which are the categories in the larger umbrella of uh, you know businesses you operate in which are fundamentally changed you know whose future is fundamentally changed you're not sure even after 3 years whether those categories will have you know similar uh, sales that, that that happened say last year yeah sure i think one of the categories which was already on a decline was formal wear and i think that's going just even further on a decline 
right. uh, for sure. So that's one category where I think the overall behavior adoption of that category it's, itself is changing. Any which ways it was seeing a much lower adoption, it had gone more to financial services and things like that. So that's definitely one category which is uh, impacted. Occasion wear is another category which is very much impacted. So your uh, whether it is your fine uh, finer rather not I would not say investment led fine jewelry but really occasion wear jewelry occasion wear Indian wear all of those kind of aspects I think that's the second category which is uh, definitely uh, impacted I think there is also some amount of uh, you know what you call women's dresses party wear etc which is which you're seeing as an impact and the same impact is seeing on kids occasion wear which was more for birthday parties and things like that. So anything which was related to large gathering, outings, etc. That's another category which is impacted. And there might be conditioning that comes in, right? Because even as things come back to normal, right? I think the adoption of newer ways to dress, I think how minimalist you can be is going to also change, especially because more and more you're spending time at home. And with home becoming a sanctuary, how you actually treat your wardrobe will also change, right? Because there's only that much space that you will have and there's only how you will manage that is going to become very important. So I think these categories will definitely see uh, an impact. But I also see that other categories might see an advantage. I see beauty as a very significant advantage. Home as a very, very significant uh, advantage. Athletics, footwear, uh, comfort shoes, all of those categories which are going towards a healthier life and a healthier lifestyle active lifestyle which is managed from home etc as well as you know limited uh, areas of outdoor for example that's going to definitely see an advantage kids is a very big category because there's too much uh, restraint on their life and you know prachi mentioned that as well i see a significant advantage over there as well yeah and how does it change the marketing mix let me ask you a direct question what happens to your marketing spends next year this i year think of- um, and it's, it's, yeah uh, it's we had already started moving much more as a percentage towards digital that continues to be on track. I think print is under severe pressure and will continue to be under severe yeah, pressure because circulation is down the category. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. So that is definitely going to be a change. And I think behaviors are going to change, right? Because, you know, people will adopt, I have already adopted to digital channels, right? In terms of consumption of content, etc. So that's one mix for sure. In terms of percentage to spends uh, overall, I think I see it a little differently. While our value of marketing in terms of the overall spend might go down a bit, I think we are all going to be spending much more as a percentage to sales. So in the overall PNL, I think marketing is going to get a larger focus. I think demand generation is going to be extremely important because there's only going to be that much in the market and how much you can pull towards yourself. I think that's that's going to be critical. And therefore, I see less pressure from uh, CFOs on uh, CMOs to actually reduce marketing. I think the cost pressure will come on other areas in the PL. That's right. And as you rightly yeah. said, percentage of marketing spend versus sales, that will remain intact. But the unfortunate reality is if sales are down, marketing spends in absolute terms are likely to come down. Prachi, what's your uh, sense on this? This year, of course, marketing spends are going to be significantly down. Will they recover uh, well enough next year? Well, uh, I'll just take the backing from Uma and Ipshita and uh, just uh, stress on the fact that you know, um, uh, print is, as, as Uma mentioned, is absolutely seeing a different kind of propensity to getting spent on. And same goes for something like um, an outdoor hoardings. Um, uh, we, as, as fashion brands, were known to flirt with hoardings like how. Uh, that's not going to stay true for a really long time. People have stopped. Or people have reduced stepping out. Your interaction with an outdoor medium has reduced. So that's not a very smart way to spend for any market year, for any brand manager at this point of time. So that's going to definitely see a, a, a step back. Um, what's going to be definitely spent on is, uh, see, all of us are on our phones, on our laptops most of the time. And that's where we get hounded as, uh, uh, as customers also. And that's where a marketer is going to look for a bank for the buck. Um, and that's, that's something that most of us are also chasing. Um, the mix is going to definitely skew towards uh, digital, uh, towards getting sales, uh, towards getting uh, the footfalls, the traffic back to your platforms, to um, your product at any point of time. Um, when is it going to come back to any kind of uh, 
pre-normalcy. I, I don't want to say that, that, that the situation is going to go back to uh, what it was uh, pre uh, previous to when this virus hit us. There will be a different kind of normal, which we'll okay. see. And uh, there will be a different kind of marketing strategy, which we will put across. We will have a different marketing mix altogether. We as customers have changed our consumption style. Um, apart from what Uma mentioned on fashion, I think one category which has seen a very different kind of consumption is grocery. Um, I'm sure most of these e-com platforms were sound, crying themselves for saying uh, we have uh, grocery shopping with us lives in the past two years. How we have started uh, consuming groceries or essentials during this time period actually screams louder than how we actually, uh, before COVID, uh, all of us went to a Kirana stop, all of, all of us went to a hypermarket, all of us went to a department store, and we would love to feel the product in, in our hand before we actually converted the final sale. That's not going to happen anymore. That's how, that's not, essentials are going to be on the click of a button. Uh, essentials are going to be a curbside pickup. Essentials are going to be um, a, something which has, which has seen a sea change how we are consuming. The second point that um, as Akshita also mentioned is how beauty as a, as a category has seen a lot of changes uh, in consumption as well. You know, um, products like uh, face washes were always dominant in the skincare segment. Um, it actually multiplied further uh, products which were uh, which were uh, which were uh, which were something uh, like 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 a base a primer has seen a step back at this point in time when you have a less use of makeup as as a whole um, then definitely a primer has taken a step back when you are going out less a product like a foundation has taken a step back but skin care has come to fore personal care has come to fore body care has come to fore these are these are the these are the newer way of consumption and um, uh, whether this will stay or not is also um, your guess is as good as mine uh, we've seen changes by the minute here uh, after after a certain point of time if there is a positive sentiment flowing in there is a there is a there is a magic wand which we see the viruses being controlled. Then definitely, uh, the, the the consumption pattern will differ from what it is currently. Fair enough. Ayushman, how much lesser money are you looking to spend this year, and will you give more money to media next year? For sure. I mean, uh, if I just talk about it annually, I didn't spend much in quarter one, right? So I'm of course going to spend a lot a lot lesser. Uh, having said that, I think. I personally, and uh, I would say maybe all of us uh, at Titan also, are slightly more optimistic about uh, the future. And uh, there's no real reason behind it, because like everybody mentioned on the panel, that it's really on the uh, on the vaccine and so on and so forth. But what we also believe truly is that I think uh, more and more customers by the day are getting uh, uh, getting uh, uh, I mean they're getting comfortable with the new normal. Okay, so that's why we see more and more people stepping out. Uh, and hence, quarter four is when we say that we are likely to be uh, possibly at last year's levels. So, I mean, I'm talking about as early as this year. You're talking Jan March. Yes. Uh, yes, Jan to March. So, so clearly next year is when we would like uh, to possibly be as, as we were last year, right? Uh, so, so that is the outlook that we are... Uh, preparing ourselves with, right? And that goes across our value value chain. Uh, like I said, I mean, maybe it's a more optimistic about, take. You're talking about fast track or you're saying tight. Yes. Well. No, I'm talking about fast track in, in, in specific. And uh, it is primarily also because of the fact that our audiences are possibly just really steaming up to let out, you know, because they're, they're, they're locked at homes. There are no colleges, there are no schools. They're all on the laptops and the systems through the day for their e-learning classes. So they're really waiting for an avenue. And uh, we really feel that this festive season is going to be a big trigger because I think parents are getting more lenient. Uh, people who are working from home for the last four or five months uh, uh, are also looking at stepping out. Okay, And now if you go into the markets, you see a few more children. Uh, I mean, even the younger ones coming out. So the youth are really coming out there. And hence, uh, quarter four is what we are hoping uh, to actually exit as we did last year. And uh, from next year, we'll take it that's a, that's a fairly optimistic uh, view and I, I hope it pans out like that because there are many businesses who don't have visibility for the next uh, two years in terms of sales coming back. So if Q4 uh, is almost equal to Q4 last year, 
I think uh, next year obviously is going to hopefully be year of growth for everyone because this year's base has been significantly driven down and revenues coming back means also more money being poured into marketing and that should be you know fairly Absolutely. good news for uh, marketers. So uh, our trigger yeah. for that, just just a point level, sorry, uh, if I just wanted to add one point. So our trigger for that actually is not alone consumer demand that we are saying that will come back to normal across categories. It is also about gaining uh, market share. That's right. So while the consumer demand we are expecting to be subdued, uh, it's not going to come back to normal. But how is your strategy going to get you more market share and hence let you exit last year's number is what we're banking on. Fair enough. Atija, uh, how do you look at your uh, you know business uh, uh, visibility? Is uh, sales have been of course impacted this year? Are you looking at uh, the impact lasting beyond another year? Uh, when do you think sales will normalize? Um, well, actually, Zimbabwe is is really well positioned at this point in time because you know we are a digital first company. Eighty percent of the revenue comes uh, from the online platform, and we've already seen recoveries happen uh, in this quarter. Uh, so we are actually expecting that the numbers uh, would go back to pre-COVID times in in less than six months for the brand. Uh, you know, about twenty percent of the business comes from other channels like retail and trade, and that while it will take a little more time, but we really don't see it lasting beyond six to nine months. Honestly, by the end of this financial year, as a company overall, Zivame would actually register pre-COVID uh, level. So we are very, very confident because we've got this advantage of you know being digital first, and a huge chunk of our business actually coming from from the channel which is most relevant at this point in time. One of the things uh, I. Uh... Notice recently, even Sanjeev Puri in his annual uh, ITC annual AGM statement mentioned this that I, uh, the FMCG as a category has had to innovate significantly to kind of you know beat the downturn, and I'm sure that's also happened in uh, categories that you all operate in. Before we take audience question uh, questions, would you like to tell us uh, some interesting things that have been done, uh, which have which has got sort of more Uh, traction with uh, consumers prachi you have anything uh, to share with us yeah i mean as, as as a brand what you can promise at this point of time is uh, to be able to give customer a complete um, uh, a promise that you are completely safe with me as a format i think that's a, that's the first proposition that we put out over there uh, that you come to us you find everything under one roof you don't need to go to and flirt with different point of sale or point of uh, shopping areas for you to be able to find everything that you have required so uh, there's a first uh, the first point that uh, the first uh, assurance that i point put we, that we put out as a brand is to be very honest and say that you uh, you know um say you're completely safe with me completely safe shopping with me and that's precisely how um i think as a brand uh, we have been able to uh, we have been able to care the garner traction with our existing customer as well as acquiring customer anything interesting you've done from a product point of view any any new launches any um so um new launches is definitely not uh, a space that we have uh, actively worked around during this time um what we have definitely done is to figure out how do we uh, how do we change our voice to put out what it actually is required for example uh, from a fashion perspective what what we have done is uh, you know this entire fashion scene has changed so there is a completely new fashion essential that has taken over Thank so uh, your your essentials what you thought pre uh, lockdown are not the essential that has been st- staying true during uh, when we entered into the situation so our voice has been uh, very categorically saying that what is it that you have uh, been uh, uh, using during this point of time and that's that's the space that we have been con- having our conversations so new fashion essential is one space that we actively uh, worked around it uh, same goes for the beauty uh, category Uh, salon talks is something that we uh, uh, we we as we brought to fore uh, most of us uh, uh, were missing our salons in fact uh, the, the uh, studies shows that in fact um, ladies have still not gone back to the salon uh, what when when they went entered the lockdown and men are the one we have who have been actually floating back to the salon far more on a higher propensity than than ladies are so um that's that's one point that we started having a conversation our uh, salon talks 
uh, what uh, before uh, actually as a non essentials opened up whatever you have within your household is what we can uh, give you um, a solution on and second once uh, uh, as a non essentials opened up then whatever minimalistic requirement you have and if you are missing your salon how is it that you bring back the salon like uh, experience back at home these are two uh, spaces when we uh, where we had active uh, voice in as well as beauty ayushman you uh, spoke very rightly about gaining more market share and one of the key aspects of market share is product innovation and i see your designation also uh, talks about being head of product so what has fast track done uh, you said you prepared ground for expansion selling more watches what has fast track done which is which is interesting from a consumer point of view uh, to get them gravitate more towards the brand Yeah, sure. So uh, one of the lowest hanging fruits that we did uh, during the lockdown was we actually launched the masks. Now that of course became a necessity, and it's also in line with the brand uh, being a very essential accessory, uh, which is up for display. So of course there were some some masks that we did. Uh, but apart from that, in the watches category, what we what we did is, and that's actually yet to see the market. Uh, but we did some innovation around uh, what's the current essential on smart uh, towards your. Uh, activity tracking towards your health health tracking so that entire piece is currently unfolding and uh, very soon around quarter three years when you're going to see some products which are very relevant to the post covid age insights is what i would put it as i mean i don't want to get into specifics right now because we've not announced it in the market but uh, but that's very specific to how we have responded because we see that being a need of the art and uh, also also the fact that uh, uh the insights are very relevant to the country i mean it's not like a global reality uh, you are trying to crack so uh so yeah i mean we are we are hoping that that's uh that's going to work well well for us uh, the reflex range is any which way is the second highest selling smart brand uh, in the in the country uh, so we have our fingers crossed on that one uh, so uh, product usually takes longer and uh, it's a 12 month cycle so yeah but we are working Doubly fast to get it soon at this time. Ipshita, your title also talks about being head of innovation. Yes. And you spoke about some of the things the beauty category has done. What more can we see from the beauty category in the next six months? So, in the next six months, as a brand, Lotus has done in the past six months a lot of things in terms of you know um, venturing into safe beauty. And as I said, you know, holistic beauty, beauty which looks like me, and especially Ayurveda space is a very growing, emerging space in beauty. So, beauty which talks about mindful consumption and also connecting with the constantly uh, connected consumer. So, Ayurveda brings that halt that. Pace that's uh, you know uh, invitation to pause for people and that's where I think the uh, the best uh, thing what Lotus did in terms of innovation instead of you know just launching a new product we did an acquisition of uh, Soul Tree which is uh, you know brings us back to our cycle because Lotus as a brand started almost thirty years ago. with the vision of bringing the traditions of healing beauty and wellness to people so beauty is not beauty anymore for us and that's why soul tree uh, as a brand uh, which which has been recently acquired by lotus it's one of the major innovations i would say that in terms of brand acquisitions we have done and also there are many things product cycle of course is a long cycle 6 to 12 months is the minimum timeline we uh, venture into safe beauty and many more products are in the pipeline also in future you would see an emerging category of uh, green clean ethical beauty which has always been a part of lotus conversations but at the same time organic beauty is something which is emerging so in the organic space we recently launched organic mineral sunscreen which is absolutely free from chemicals so lotus organics as a brand has launched uh, mineral sunscreens as well so interesting um, uh, product innovations are in the pipeline and we would talk about it as and when time permits for now soul tree and ayurveda and mindful beauty and holistic beauty is something which will see an emergence in the coming future as well because safe beauty assured beauty mindful beauty as well as beauty that looks like me are the current trends and of course in innovations to come Perfect. also in makeup also just wanted to add sorry just sure. wanted to add Uh, in makeup you would see an emergence of the mattes so matte uh, makeup is again is going to be trending very soon once the things go back to normal even with masks non transferable matte makeup matte makeup is something which is going to emerge as a winner in the future fantastic we are almost yeah. out of time so uh, let me ask one last parting question all all panelists can maybe take 20 seconds each uh, uma will start with you 
uh, what is your final prediction on maybe two ways covid will leave a lasting impact on the fashion lifestyle industry um i think the first lasting impact is definitely what we've all spoken about in terms of uh digital right and how digital will become a primary channel instead of being a support channel uh, you know for all of us and we'll have to therefore emerge as a shopping channel experience channel service channel innovation channel etc so digital will become all encompassing uh, you know for us for sure i think the second impact is going to be a push towards uh, i think more secure safe healthy uh, kind of options which will have to emerge in the future in terms of what we offer right from our assortment to uh, you know how we actually talk to consumers and uh, what we create as um, possibilities for customers in terms of what they can indulge in fantastic patija what's your prediction um two things one is i think uh, the faster adapt adoption of to technology or rather a comfort level of consumers when it comes to technology i think brands which can leverage technology uh, to connect and make their brands more relevant in consumers life that's going to really speed up in the coming uh, few years and secondly there are going to be emergence of these trends that we already seeing which is loungewear which is athleisure all of these trends are going to start picking up and become far more relevant and i do believe that you know and the safety and hygiene masks are not going to go away there is going to be the element of fashion that's going to come we are definitely going to be seeing designer masks uh, coming in in the you know the next uh, few months so yeah these are the trends that i believe um, will happen ipsita well uh, if we were to see you know i would say that uh, people uh, should leverage uh, technology like uh, khatija rightfully pointed out technology is very important because beauty industry specifically beauty industry is based on try on so try on virtual try on is something which will see a uh, Uh, emergence in the coming future and brand should leverage that though uh, you know uh, uh, the virtual try ons and the ai ar interfaces have been there in the beauty industry for a very long time but it's time now that we pick it up really uh, you know in, in on priority basis that is one thing the second thing is uh, very importantly conscious consumption of beauty is very important so any brand which leverages on a story on a promise of safe beauty at the same time also talks about beauty which is clean green ethical and also sustainable the consumer has become very conscious the pandemic has changed the face of uh, you know the entire earth forever so people have become very very conscious about the environment so any beauty brand which is going to be true to the ethics of beauty uh, in terms of conscious consumption that is something which will be a very very promising future very for us as an industry yeah very relevant and fair point prachi what's your sense what what are the impact impacts that covid will leave behind for the industry two things from a fashion perspective i think uh, multiple usage of the same apparel and the way to actually go minimalistic will definitely uh, be one way to look at it and uh, the usage of ar vr is going to be a behavioral change for consumers uh, um, uh, for sure it's fun it's easy and people will find that it it's it, it has a long term impact on how beauty and fashion will get consumed rather than just a good to have it will become a must have in times to come yes again very relevant points i think both of them ayushman your last word yeah so i think uh, a lot of the points got covered uh, the two that i had in my mind were sustainability is going to be a big piece for us as well i think the youth our core audience is uh, possibly the most conscious when it comes to that i think they truly believe that brands are clearly not adding anything back so they shouldn't be taking away for sure uh, so sustainability is a is a big one and uh, i think fitness and the focus on it is also going to be the second uh, sea change and every related industry around it i mean gyms have been closed for a very long time uh, but uh, i think there are newer opportunities lying there uh, which might uh, really come up uh, yeah so i'm going to uh, just pick up a couple of audience questions since we are already out of time first one is uh, what would be the strategy in pulling crowd to stores across all brands so maybe you know uma you can take this up uh, how do you pull in more crowds one is of course as unlock happens you expect people to walk in but what is what is the way to get more people in i think we are not going to be pulling crowds that's the first thing because we should not be pulling crowds 
right i think we have to keep in mind that uh, this is not the time to create a crowded shopping experience and make people gather in the crowd so that's the first thing i think what we have to do is we have to have a measured uh, approach to how we generate footfall in the store find other ways to actually generate demand which is beyond that and that's going to be important and we have all invested in processes or methods where we can measure the capacity in a store in terms of how much staff and how much customers we can accommodate keeping it uh, safe and that's going to stay important till such time that we don't come out of this uh, covid situation but okay let me if i would rephrase it what's the way to pull in more consumers in more customers I think, in of course uh, i don't think that the demand market. generation and marketing principles are changing we've all spoken about what people are interested in what are people buying right now i think putting that out to them in terms of what is available uh, you know with us which is more relevant to the consumers yeah. that we cater to is going to be important but what's going to be important also is to communicate them very clearly how we're going to serve in this new retail experience right what is it that they can expect what is going to happen when they want to go to a trial room are they going to be standing in a queue to pay their bills i think all of this has to be given as assurance and confidence to customers that when they come in yes they will still have an enjoyable experience but it's going to be done in a responsible uh, manner which uh, looks after them and looks after our staff as well fantastic yeah uh, this next question how are brands going to in the lifestyle space used to are uh, going to use more influencer marketing prachi maybe you can take this up influencer marketing i think it the term is so misused uh, largely saying that uh, you know uh, having a brand ambassador is an influencer having an influencer so um, right. influencer marketing is uh, going to see a, from an experience point of view i think we are going to be much more focused on having nano influencer and micro influencer because um, as uma had rightly pointed out at the beginning of the conversation that catchment area specific uh, shopping or sales has picked up very faster at a faster rate so um, having a localized voice having an influencer who knows the uh to the tune of uh, what is being consumed in a specific catchment area is going to be true for a brand a big brand like us or even a smaller uh, local brand so that's going to stay true uh, uh having said that bigger brands or uh, bigger influencers are definitely going to be relevant uh, but uh, specifically my influencer and an influencer will see the light of the day fantastic Thank you so much to all the panelists. Thank you, Uma, Khatija, Ipsita, Prachi, Ayush. Thank, Thank, Thank you for joining us. An insightful conversation. Thank you uh, to everyone who was listening in. Uh, some useful insights. I hope uh, this uh, entire situation is behind us soon, and uh, you know, vaccine is out so that customers are able to crowd back into the malls very soon. We are, we are, we are able to get back to our uh, you know normal routine lives. Till next time. Thank you so much. Stay safe. and uh, just a reminder on friday we have another webinar at 4 o'clock uh, that is a one on one conversation under the exchange media conclave series uh, with the uh, uh, with the uh, with uh, uh, mariam matthew who leads the digital initiatives for the uh, malayalam manorama group and she's turned around a 130 year old legacy brand into a digital first company so be there whoever can find time to listen to that till then goodbye stay safe thank you thank you thank you, thank you everyone bye, -bye.